welcome, welcome to another episode of the Pixelated Sausage Show. Hi, 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 hi. How are y'all doing? I'm, of course, your host, Mark Krishnez. Y'all can find me pretty much everywhere at PX Sausage. Of course, if you enjoy the show, like to support it, or want links to the site and the Discord and the Patreon and all that good jazz, you can find all that over at pxsausage.com. Anyway, today I'll be talking about a handful of games, including Gravity Oddity, How to Escape. That is how to, the number two, escape. And that's not a, a game about how to escape your balls or how who escapes your balls, despite there being the number two in it, which is commonly what people call pooping. Fun fact, you just learned something. I bet you never knew that. Also, Myth Force and Heavy Duty Challenge, colon, the off-road truck simulator. Before I get to that, one, I have given up on trying to do anything with my hair. It is just a mess and has a mind of its own. It does its own thing, plays by its own rules, and I just have to accept that. So many cowlicks all over the place, which I don't understand because I never hung out with cows growing up, didn't live on a farm. How they get around to licking me? I don't know. I don't know. But they did. They licked me all over. And they, they didn't even stay the night. They just left me. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's the middle of the night. My back is in an incredible amount of pain. My back has just been a mess for a while since my little accident. And it's very annoying. I could really go for a PlayStation Portal, but you change PlayStation with Xbox and Portal with Zordal. And then I can play my games while laying in bed and helping my back recuperate. I'll also say this for living large's sake. After finishing Supernatural and not knowing what to watch and trying out a few things to see if there were other shows I wanted to remove from my collection that I haven't watched in a while, and I confirmed that or I realized that they were things I didn't want to keep that weren't as good as I remember them being. Like the Terminator Siriconic Chronicles? Or is it the Siriconic Chronicles? It's not the Siriconic Chronicles, Terminator. Whatever the exact title is, it's probably just Terminator, no, the, the Siriconic Chronicles. That went away. Won't get into a, why? Because that's not what the show is about. You want to you want a show about shows and movies? Too bad. I don't have the time for that. But I, long story short, I finally returned to Star Trek, and I just finished the first season of Discovery. I have thoughts. Oh, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. Anywho, I also have thoughts about the games that I played. Starting with Gravity Oddity, which is a rogue like or light? I get nah more so roguelike. Because I think the only carryover upgrades and unlocks are either cosmetics for your character or your companions. Or in the very whatever space of permanent drops, run drops, whatever you would call those, where now this perk will show up in a treasure chest so that you can find that and attach it to your or mods specifically because that's one of the main gameplay elements of gravity oddity which is a game where 
you in a very simplistic art style is very very cartoony thick outlines solid colors primary colors bold colors very very kid friendly and it's aesthetic but it's a game where your buddy Gary I believe his name is gets kidnapped and you have to go and rescue him and Gary created these gravity boots or whatever that allow you to walk on the walls I guess there's a bit of exposition to start things off that I paid attention to enough to know that there's something with gravity but it's not, it's not important but you have to go save them that's what's important and gameplay wise the way everything works is that it's all on a 2D plane it's all side scrolling and you can walk on walls all you want and then you can also jump off of them and use your jetpack you can not glide it's not sprint what the hell do you call it your dash 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 you can dash along walls or dash in space and the air when you are using your jetpack when you are jumping in into zero gravity space and then you have a gun that you can use to attack enemies that you'll come across with the right trigger or teleport to the place you're aiming at with the left trigger. And those are the main mechanics of the game. Mods come into play that allow you to enhance usually your offensive abilities. They'll make bullets home towards enemies or shoot behind you in addition to shooting in front of you or wherein you hit a wall. It'll create a little area effect blast that'll stun robots and the like and all these mods work off of a type of battery system so they have a limited number of uses and once they're all out then mods donezo but what you're doing is jumping between these various little star systems galaxies what have you where they are Littered, they are populated, not littered, they are populated by a handful of space stations and one boss station. Not really space station, more spaceships, but some space stations. They're, they're all populated with these various different points of interest that when you clear them out of enemies, they'll unlock a part of their particular area that will provide you with a chest or two or three that will have either a heart in them to refill your health a metal heart that'll give you some armor or a mod that you can use to boost your abilities and you go through all these areas there are a handful of fast travel points on there and one at your ship so that when you complete an area and get to the boss you can fast travel to your ship and not have to go all the way there. When you reach a boss, you'll fight against them. But when you defeat them, then you get a star map to the next area and the ability to sacrifice a mod for some kind of permanent upgrade for the rest of your run whether that be opening up an additional mod slot so you can attach more mods an additional heart slot or i think the other one is your shield will really rejuvenate faster it's all pretty simple straightforward stuff and it's it's all right the 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 gameplay is interesting and it is kind of fun utilizing this gravity system where you can walk along the walls and it's all very magnetic it's all very fluid when you transition between walls so if you're transitioning between the ground and a wall you just 
point in that direction and your character will automatically transition from the ground to the wall and then to the ceiling and so on and so forth. And it feels pretty good. When you jump off of a wall, then you'll be in zero gravity mode. You can use your jetpack to move slowly around or dash to move around. And if you run out of fuel, you can still dash, but then you can't move freely with the jetpack. And it feels pretty good. Shooting's all right. The one frustration in the gameplay I ran into quite frequently was that when you are in the air moving around, if you get to a wall or a ceiling or a floor and you're moving in that direction and your feet are towards the direction of the wall, the ceiling, and the floor, you will automatically attach to it when you hit it. And then if you try to, or, or don't know that you've done that and try to dash in a certain way in the air or navigate in the air to avoid an obstacle or, or a trap, a turret, a mine, a bomb, an enemy's fire, you can end up not really going anywhere because you're attached to the surface and I found that to be frustrating but overall felt pretty all right the basic enemy encounters all the areas where you have to take out all the enemies to unlock the treasure chest area not really that challenging the boss fights can be a little bit interesting and they do ask you to do certain things whether it be navigating a path full of various traps to reach the boss where you then attack them and then they'll teleport to the other side of the area so that you have to navigate all the way back to where you were and they do it two times three times and then you've, you defeat them and it's all randomly generated so a boss you get in the first area you might get in the fourth area in a second run but you do all this, and on the normal difficulty, the default difficulty, the only difficulty unlocked at the very beginning, it's very, very short, and it's pretty easy to get through after a few runs, where it's only, I think, four areas until you get to the, the main boss rush area, which is the headquarters of, I forget the name of the organization, but when you get there, you're going through a bunch of Train cars, essentially. Space ship cars, essentially. And you'll fight against repurposed bosses that you fought against during your playthrough that are all weaker than they were in their boss form. So that one I mentioned where they'll make you navigate through this trap area and then they'll teleport two more times. They, all the bosses in that section in the final area, they only take the one hit or it'll take significantly less damage to defeat. And then you get to the final boss, which is just a bit of a tedious fight. Then you save Gary and you realize, oh, this isn't, this isn't the perfect ending because something happens. Not everyone makes it. And it was out of your control. There's nothing you could have done. So now you have the Hardcore veteran difficulty, I believe it's called. And you could do it all again. Sadly, I found it all pretty boring. And after I, I finished that first run, I didn't have any desire to see it through anymore. To see where the story went on the harder difficulty. Because it's a fine playing game, but it's not particularly exciting. And was fairly repetitive right from the start. But it's okay. It's okay. There's a bit of sadness that colored my entire playthrough because right at the bat, 
there were a few screens after the little bit of tutorial they make you go through, which is fine. Teach you the systems. Solid tutorial. I pressed the Y button and got a message from, I, I presume, the developer that dedicated the game to his son, I believe, who is no longer with us. Unless I read it wrong. I, I didn't want to re-watch those credits because it made me very sad. So, that was there too. So that's Gravity Oddity. It's okay. But I in no way want to play any more of it. Then we have How to Escape, which is a cooperative only experience where one person plays the game on their console platform of choice and then the other person has to download an app for free and help the person playing the game progress through the story which involves you being trapped on a train and having to get through all the various cars to get to the front so they can put on the emergency uh, pull the emergency brake and you have this very menacing dude talking to you between the various cars telling you what's going on a little bit very over the top very poorly written but whatever it doesn't really matter what matters is the gameplay and the gameplay is okay you are tasked with having to figure out how to escape from these various rooms obviously and you'll not be given a whole lot of information you just have to kind of look at your surroundings see what's interactable and then communicate with your partner who doesn't need to be in the same room so you can play this remotely you can tell someone hey download this app they show you a qr code on the screen but i'm sure you can just find the app by searching in the app store of your choice and then you go back and forth. The, the thing about this, because I have not played a lot of games like this. There are a handful of games like this that are popular. I think of a lot of VR games like Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, I believe is one of them. And there are other ones as well. But in those, I think it's more of just a the second person works as a kind of quick not quick but uh they're there as an faq as a guide and instead of you having to navigate to a page you just ask them hey what does the guide say what is the what does the faq say but in how to escapes case the person using the app, they have to do a bit of puzzle solving themselves. And you'll have to communicate with each other in certain respects. For instance, in the first room, there was a part of the person on the app's side where they had to complete a spot the difference screen. So they had an image of the room I was in and they had to figure out what was different. And when you navigate the app and learn about the various things that are going on in there, because the app has its different areas, a messaging system where you can talk to the person who is doing all this, and they'll, they'll give you hints there, depending on what you write and how the, the playthrough is going. And there, there are other things as well, but with a spot the difference thing, you'll have an image in the app and then the person can look around their environment, of course, and you have to look at that and communicate with your partner in a clear and concise way to try and figure out what is different. So you see in this bottom corner, uh, there, there are three candles on the table. And then you ask your partner, are there three candles on that table in the corner and the partner will say no there are only two 
then you know that's a different. Okay. There's a lamp in this spot. Is there a lamp in the actual room? Yes, there is a lamp. Okay, that that is there. And so you have to communicate with your partner. And they have to do some puzzle solving themselves and they have to navigate the app and figure out how certain of systems in the app work. There's a bit more of an involvement of a requirement among uh, for the companion player to be active in the experience, which is nice. But it is also given that something where you have to have a good partner and they have to they have to be they have to want to be involved and if you don't have that it's going to be a failure so it's a very it's a game for people who know who like to work together know they work well together and enjoy working together if that is not you you're going to have to pass. But for what it is, for the type of game How to Escape is a cooperative only experience where one person plays on uh, plays the game itself and then another person uses his companion app. It's all right. It's, it's, it's not bad. Yeah, that's How to Escape. Myth Force is another rogue light where... He plays one of four fantasy heroes in a game very inspired by 80s cartoons like He-Man, Thundercast, 80s and early 90s cartoons. I'll give it. With a theme song that had me very excited, the first second gave me a bit of the Final Countdown vibes and then it turned into a pretty bland theme song. And it's a pretty bland game, but the rollout elements, after you pick your character, you'll see a sort of startup screen or whatever, where the background has all these buildings, but everything kind of blends together. It's all kind of faded and doesn't stand out in any way that makes it seem interactable. But all those buildings, they all represent different skill trees and stuff of that nature that the game doesn't tell you about. You just kind of figure it out on your own, which was a little annoying. But the way it all works is that after you pick your character and it is a cooperative game, you can play with friends or randoms. It's a default to open. I turn that off because I just want to play it by myself and figure things out with how, without having to deal with some random buffoon butting around saying bad stuff in voice chat presumably because they just say the worst of people but when you start the game every character has one ranged weapon and one melee weapon and outside of their various abilities they all feel pretty much the same they might have a little bit more HP a little bit more MP but fundamentally, they all feel the same sans their abilities. And the thing about the game that kills it, ultimately, is that it's the first person. And, and, and the aesthetic, the, the, our style is cel-shaded, looks all right, but doesn't doesn't have as much style to it as one might presume given its inspiration and the opening with that theme song and everything you, you might expect a bit more style to it but it's it's pretty generic visually in terms of the enemy design and everything you're, you're fighting a lot of to to begin with skeletons and then you'll get some goblins and then you get some kind of funky spore creature things but nothing that really stands out. Nothing super exciting. But it just doesn't feel good. 
combat is slow, your movement is slow, enemy movement is slow, action is slow, all of it feels so freaking slow. And also some of the, all the characters also have different abilities in terms of what the jump button does upon a second press. So some might do a little dash and one might do a double jump. Whoop you do. But I found the game to just feel so sluggish and tedious and ultimately unfun. It was a very, very unfun first person action game with a bow that feels awful and melee combat that feels okay and feels better depending on the character you're playing. I liked playing as a rogue who had a kind of fencing piercing attack as one of their abilities and then a dust ability so they throw dust in the enemy's eyes that stuns them for a little bit. I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed dusting my enemies and then attacking them. And I enjoyed the knight essential, the tank who was if she felt pretty good melee wise and then the magic user was kind of boring I was just bored playing it and I was really really disappointed because I was super excited about it I read the description for it saw the visuals and thought this seems like a game I am going to love. This is going to be another Gunfire Reborn, Robo Tech, whatever that. It's not Robo Tech, but that Robo one that is, I think, still in early access, still a game preview game. But I thought this was going to be another one of those. It's not. It's just fucking boring. Comet feels awful. Awful might be a bit of a stretch, but it doesn't feel good. That's Myth Force. Then, the last game is Heavy Duty Challenge, Colon Off-Road, Truck Simulator. This is kind of in the same vein or same lane, you could say, as the Runner game. So, Mud Runner, Snow Runner. I think there's a new one coming out, maybe. Or they're still either just working on Snow Runner. But, the difference here is that what they're asking you to do is more of an obstacle course type of setup. And the tutorial that tries to introduce you to the game and its systems felt very oppressive, really in my face, really harsh colors. And I didn't think it explained itself well as someone who doesn't drive. I don't think it did a good job of explaining the reasons for switching between drive modes or how the manual transmission works. It's manual only. There are no accessibility options. And so after the complete the tutorial, I was like, uh, I don't really like the way this feels. And going on my first mission, which is a weird thing. The I don't know what the fuck is going on. But after doing the tutorial and having to purchase my first vehicle, all the vehicles ranged in price from two to four thousand, I believe, coins. And when I looked at my bank account, I had like ten million coins. What the fuck was that? What the hell is going on there? weird but I bought my, my vehicle and then I upgraded everything I could at the time because why wouldn't I? I had the money to do it and then when you start your first little mission it says do this go through these 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 not cones these whatever checkpoints get to the finish line or you just Drive freely, do whatever you want, just explore the world. And it was when I started driving freely, because in the tutorial, you're in a very confined space. 
and you're more so concerned about just getting through it that you don't take the time to look at the visuals. When I got into this open area that had this objective for me to complete or I could just go off on my own and explore it, I noticed that visually the game looks terrible. The colors are all washed out. There's horrible pop in. The draw distance is not great. And when you start looking out into the distance, there's not a lot there. And it looks like everything's covered in fog. It's just a very, very ugly game, especially the, the washed out nature of it all. It feels like the shadows and highlights and everything is overexposed overexposed or underexposed depending but everything's blown out or washed out or just not none of it looks good and the vehicles don't feel that good I really appreciate the running games more playing a game like this where you have your various objectives and you have an open world you can't explore freely. But as opposed to it feeling more like an obstacle course, it, you feel it feels more situational in Mud Runner or Snow Runner, where you can go around doing other things, but then if you have a task, you go to that area and you feel like, okay, I have a task, I have a job to do. It's here. Let me do it. Let me figure out how to do it. Let me look at my surroundings and try and figure out the best way to complete this task. And as challenging as the runner games may seem, or as the word I'm searching for is not in my head, but as, as potentially not off-putting, but they, they, they can seem intimidating from the outside. They are pretty accessible. You can, you, you need to spend a little bit of time to learn how everything works, but overall they're, they're pretty accessible games. Heavy Duty Challenge is not that. And it's just, it's a very bare bones, ugly game that left me disappointed because I was excited about it. I thought it was going to be a runner like experience that might have even been a bit more accessible, but it wasn't that. It's, it's, it pales in comparison, literally, because the visuals are so fucking washed out to the point of being pale. That, that's it in terms of what I've been playing. I feel like this has been a super low energy episode. And with that, not a particularly good one. So let us just end it and be on our way so that I can go lay down and rest my back. Okay. Sound good to you? Sounds good to me. With that, all that jazz. That'll do it for this here episode of the Pixelated Sausage Show. Once again, I'm Marcus Nez. Y'all can find me pretty much everywhere at PX Sausage. If you'd like to support me and my nonsense, and why would you? But if you do, you can do that over at patreon.com slash PXS. Speaking of Patreon and all that good jazz, if you'd like to find links to the Patreon as well as the site, the YouTube, the Discord, and so much more, you can find them over at PXSausage.com. That is PX Sausage. Dot com. But that is it. That is all. As always, thank you for watching or listening. I hope you enjoy this here episode, and I hope you have both a wonderful rest of your day, a lovely rest of your week, and a wonderful weekend. For now, adios, arrivederci. Bye! shit <laughs> oh I forgot I didn't I restarted the computer's so steam deck 
needed to be woken up. Okay. Now we can transition out in the way that it's supposed to transition out. So adios, arrivederci. Bye.